Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GB Whiskey One Good Vibrations. I would like to describe a method of bending a dipole antenna on the high frequency bands to save space uh, and ideally for installation in indoor locations such as attics. It's the optimum configuration for bending a dipole antenna in terms of geometric characteristics. And that is, it on, uh, it's commonly used on, or used to be used quite often on the VHF bands. It was called a halo or squalo antenna, depending on whether it was round or square. Basically, what it is, is it's a dipole antenna bent, a half-wave dipole bent into either a circle or a square, or in some cases, a rectangular shape. The circumference is one half wavelength, the length of the dipole, but it is not a loop antenna because the far end of the antenna, that is opposite the feed point, is open, not closed. It's a dipole antenna bent in the most extreme possible way, other than, uh, well, a folded dipole really isn't exactly a dipole antenna. This is a, a, because it's closed at the far end, whereas this is open at the far end. Suppose you have an attic. Uh, in an average house, and the circumference of your attic is maybe, say, 70 feet. Uh, I don't know, uh, that, that's the circumference of the attic at the level you want to place your antenna, 70 feet. That's a little more than the length of a half-wave dipole on 40 meters. So suppose that you want to operate 40 meters. You can't just put a straight 40 meter dipole antenna in your attic because that would be 66 feet long, probably longer than your house. If your house is that long, your attic circumference is much greater than that. Lucky you if your house is 66 feet long and you want a 40 meter dipole antenna, you can make it straight. If it's a little shorter, you can bend the ends, you know, maybe bend one of them north, one of them south if your house is oriented east, west, say. But if your house is more like the size of mine, uh, the circumference of your attic is probably 70 feet or so. In that case, you can run your dipole antenna all the way around the edge of the attic and bring the ends as close together as, as they happen to come in order to get the full length of the dipole in your antenna. But of course, you don't want them to come all the way together and come into contact or you'll have a closed loop antenna and that uh, has much different characteristics than an open loop. The open loop antenna, uh, if the ends just come almost together within a few inches of each other, say, has a feed point impedance ranging between 10 and 20 ohms, depending on the exact shape of the antenna, whether it be a rectangle, a fairly wide rectangle, a square, or ideally a circle. As like you have a circular house, right? But suppose you want to operate on 7.025 megahertz and you want to put up an indoor antenna and you don't have <clears throat> room for a dipole unless you fold it around into an open loop. You want to feed that thing with 50 ohm coaxial cable. The problem is that the feed point impedance is very low probably going to be on the order of 15 ohms uh, or thereabouts. Uh, that'll cause a 4 to 1 standing wave ratio with 50 ohm coaxial cable. Moreover, it is a balanced antenna. 
If it's a balanced antenna, then you're going to need either a ballon coil or an antenna tuner that can tune perfectly balanced antennas, such as the type made by Palstar, which also uh, has a fairly wide tuning range. But you're still going to be stuck with this problem of having a very low feed point impedance and a very low <clears throat> radiation resistance, no matter whether you can tune it to 50 ohms with a tuner or not. And that is going to mean it's going to not be a particularly efficient antenna because the surrounding uh, resistances, the ground and other things like that, it, it's a radiation resistance that low is never a good thing. But there is something you can do still if you don't want to run too much power, and that is to put a capacitor between the end between the uh, ends of the antenna when they come near each other. So you have this, say, rectangular shaped loop antenna, which would ordinarily have a 15 ohm purely resistive impedance at the feed point. And you have a ballon coil, but you're putting a three or four uh, to one standing wave ratio on that ballon coil which is not too bad, but it's pretty bad. Uh, and you have this low radiation resistance problem. If you put a high voltage variable capacitor between the ends of your antenna and tune it to just the right value, you can get the feed point impedance of your antenna to 50 ohms at the operating frequency of 7.025 megahertz in the circumference of 66 feet. This, the exact opposite end of the antenna must be where the capacitor or uh, other device is located. It, in other words, 33 feet on one side and 33 feet on the other, just like an ordinary 40 meter dipole, just bend it into a loop. That is um, not really a halo antenna as such. Uh, it's more like a, I'd call it a tuned open loop antenna. And you can use it uh, to work some contacts from indoors without creating the eyesore that your property managers will doubtless send you to the gulag for if they catch you, but they're not going to catch you unless they go up into your attic and you're going to say, what's this? And they say, oh, that's my FM receiving antenna or something like that. Or it's, it's my, uh, it's my hair dryer <laughs> or something, but they're not going to, you know, but I wouldn't have that problem anyway. I don't have a property manager. I, and I don't really want to put up a 40 meter indoor antenna, I'm just yammering to tell you how you might do it if you want to do it. Put the variable capacitor at that far end and tune it until you get a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio with a one-to-one -one ballon at the feed point of your antenna fed with coaxial cable. Then you'll have a reasonable radiation resistance and an antenna that probably won't do too bad. The only thing you want to be careful of is not to run very much power because the voltage that appears across that capacitor will be extreme if you run more than about 100 watts. If you were to run a kilowatt into an antenna like that, uh, not only would you more than likely cause havoc with your home appliances, uh, yeah, you know, our um, electromagnetic interference, in other words, but you would, you could very well end up with arcing in that capacitor. Use uh, QRP or sort of quasi QRP, QQRP, 50 watts, say. And it's an antenna for experimenters because you're going to have to experiment with the value of that capacitor. 
Uh, you may have to go to a ham fest to find the bloody capacitor in the first place. You're gonna have to get creative as to where you put the wire for the antenna. And uh, I can't say anything about what that thing's gonna pick up from the appliances in your house. That's a whole different story. There's nothing you can do about that except have a separate receiving antenna that uh, maybe is one of those loops that you can aim to null out the noise. But in any case, this is your half wave circumference open loop antenna. If it were a perfect circle, 66 feet around, 66 divided by 3.14, uh, is uh, what the diameter of that thing would only be about 22 feet. Uh, so that's that's pretty reasonable. You're going to be able to fit that in your attic in an average sized house. Uh, so if you want an attic antenna and you like to experiment and you like to listen to W1GV yammer about antennas. You're in the right place. Go for it. Stan Jubilisco saying 73. And so long. And that on any antenna, no matter what the feed point impedance, no matter where it's located, in my native fist always translates to did da 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 da.